Hi everyone, welcome to Cake Clicks, welcome to my kitchen. We're in here because I've got no Wi-Fi anywhere else. This is the best place for a signal. So um, I'm going to get straight on with it because 45 minutes sounds like a long time. But there's quite a lot I want to squeeze in and show you. So like I said, showed you quickly the other day, we are going to make this giant Cafe Ole Dahlia. So I know they're not actually in the gardens at the moment, but I've been planting my today, hopefully enough, ready for sort of August, September time flowering. So I always like to use one of the fresh flowers as a template. Like I said, pull it apart, use those petals to work out what size cutters and things I'm going to use. So if we move the camera down, Chris is with me today, my other half. He's acting as cameraman. Yeah, sorry. So, so yeah, he apologises already for his, uh, his skills. But if you give us a thumbs up and give us, show us some love, just check that you can hear me and see me and that there's someone out there. Hopefully someone wants to see my daily. Yeah, you've got lots of people already. <laughs> Fantastic. Right then, I'll get started. So, the centre of it is a one inch polystyrene ball. So, you could use a piece of sugar paste, but because it's so big, it'd be quite heavy. And then you're going to strip the flowers going to sort of wobble a lot when it's on your cake. So by using polystyrene, it takes a lot of the ball cake. And then I've got a full length piece of 20 gauge wire. And all I'm going to do is push that through the centre and get the ball to the middle of the wire. And then literally push left over right, right over left. And when they twist, if you put your fingers there, whoops, twist the right way helps. And just keep twisting. You will then tighten the two wires together and it will lock this polystyrene ball into place. Also, just as an extra little thing, if you put your pliers right at the top, obviously you've got a really strong grip then, you can put those extra couple of twists on and that makes sure that that polystyrene ball is not going going anywhere. And because this, I, I rarely put this size flower in a spray to be honest, so it's brilliant because it is so big and oversized, it's kind of like the focal point or it can be the topper of a wedding cake. So by the time all the wires are put on it, I find just a, a simple poser pick on the back of it, that will hold it in place. So don't, you don't need to worry too much about trying to add foliage and other things at this stage. So like I said, that's the start of it. I'm now going to get on with the petals. So the first thing I'm going to do, it's actually a giant daisy cutter. It's a PME plunger cutter. So again, brilliant for sunflowers, all sorts of things. But this is size wise. So it's four inches, which is, what's that roughly centimetre? So 10, 11 centimetres. So it is quite, you can see, nearly as big as the palm of my hands. So, and in the centre, we're actually, I've coloured some paste as well already, and I used um, sugar flare colours, I used some peach, and then just to sort of soften it a little um, and mute the colour, I did a touch of cream as well, and that just sort of takes that sharp orangeness from the paste, so professional term, orangeness, I reckon. <laughs> and I'm going to use some Crisco, you can use Crisco or Trex. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that to the paste to sort of condition it. That just makes it easy to work with. And I'm using Squire's flower paste today. Reason for that is it does dry pretty quickly. And because I've only got 45 minutes, I want everything to be dry for you. So, right. I'm just going to put a bit of Crisco on my board as well. And then I'll start this off. And then I always, for all my flowers, I always use a pasta roller, pasta machine, just to get the consistency more than anything else. So I know I've got a nice, even consistency for my petals. So I'll get to that kind of stage. And then I'm just going to quickly pop it through the pasta machine. I don't know whether you can see all the mess that's over here that you're not supposed to see. <laughs> Behind the scenes, 
There we go. Then you'll see that we've got a really nice, fine, consistent paste. So I'm just going to dust a little bit of corn flour on it, just so we, nothing sticks to itself. And then check it. There we go. Cut out one of those. I'm just going to show you one today. But I would use, I'll show you, I've got some pre-made ones just to show you the, the stages. So again, you can see, and then just with the, the sort of palm of your hand, just rub over the edge of the petals. And this just gets any loose bits that didn't quite get cut properly, and any bits of fluff, sort of like fluffy edges. So it just smooths all your petals, and you know then that when you pop it out onto your onto your foam pad, that you've got nice clean edges. I flipped it over as well, reason being, when you eject it from the plunger, you do get slight little indents, and I don't, obviously we don't want those in our flower, so I'm just gonna flip it over. What paste are you using? I'm using Squires, so it, because I know Squires sets pretty quickly, so it's good for, good for a demonstration, good for teaching with. And I find when I am teaching, students sort of, obviously it's the first time they've made whatever the topic of the class is. And with using Squires, they usually find it quite easy to, uh, to get used to it. So, ball tool, I'm using a ball tool, it's probably the same as the fingernail, is the easiest way to uh, describe the size of it. So, if it's too small, as you stretch the petals, you'll end up with too many sort of creases and crinkles. If it's too big, you'll kind of be joining, you'll be doing two at once and they'll all get stuck together. So something like this is ideal. But all I'm going to do, probably take about four or five strokes across each one. And we, all we're trying to do is lengthen the petals. So I'll just work my way all around these. And the first time I did this, I got a giant, giant dahlia flower in the garden. Picked it reluctantly. <laughs> picked it apart even more reluctantly but just sort of measured the length of some of the petals and unrolled some of them and saw the diameters drew around them and then sort of looked up what cutters I'd got that were the closest to it so where possible I try and use cutters that I've got and not necessarily always buy like a, an expensive cutter that um, that you might use once or twice. So try the flower first, if you like it, then it might be worth treating yourself to a, a special set of cutters. But what paste would you use if you weren't teaching? So you'd said squires is good for teaching and demo. Yeah, but... um, they're all, to be honest, they've all got their own sort of unique little, little thing. So um, platinum paste, for example, there's some paste out there that you can get ultra, ultra fine. Um, the flower paste, made by the cake decorating company is lovely. Again, you can get that really fine, but it does take a long top, a little bit longer to dry. Uh, Saracino, do a flower paste. Again, lovely paste to work with, but it just takes a little bit longer to dry. So it's, um, especially with teaching, speed is always obviously the thing, and demonstrations. You wouldn't want to sit and watch me <laughs> Watch 30 petals dry, trust me, so. Right, there we go. So you can see that's, that's sort of like stretched out the, the petals. Again, if you want to know roughly size wise, I've taken that now to about 13 centimetres, so five inch, I've added about half an inch to each petal. And then, to start to give it some sort of shape and texture, I'm going to get the thin, thin end of the Dresden tool, and from the, Starting on the foam across the tip, just drag the Dresden tool right down the middle of the petal. You can go sort of two thirds of the way down. It doesn't have to go all the way down because it's only the tips of the petal that of the petals that we're going to see. And you'll see already they're really starting to get like a natural curl on them, which is what we want. No two flowers are the same, so remember that as well. I always try and make sure if I'm doing two or three flowers that I sort of twist petals differently, turn the, the petals the wrong way around, especially with daily. So there's no, no right or wrong. It's quite a sort of a messy flower, really. 
There we go. Hopefully you can see. If you, again, give me a give me a thumbs up if you're close enough. If I'm demonstrating close enough to the lens. If not, I can move a bit closer for you. Right, and then actually before I do that, I'm just going to flip it onto another foam pad. This time, this one's got a hole in, just to make it easier for me to thread. You could have done the Dresden tool bit on this as well, but I just like to make life hard for myself. <laughs> right, a little bit of glue in the centre, and then we're going to go sort of two thirds of the way up each one. It doesn't matter, the ones that are sort of twisted over, you'll find as you start to brush them, they turn back the right way anyway. But don't worry, if, again, like I said, if it is a little bit, if it looks a bit messy, because when we put this on the flower, we'll turn it upside down anyway, so. And what size was the ball tool? The ball tool, I'd say, I mean, sort of compared to your fingernail, but I've got big fingers, so. That, I'd say, is about one and a half centimetres in diameter. Right, so, just check that that's all glued. So I glued the centre, I glued sort of two thirds, three quarters of the way up the petal oars. And now I'm just going to drop this through the middle. If I can find, I've moved it, there we go. <laughs> You'll see, so that kind of thing. And then all I'm going to do is flip it over upside down is that end shot? Yep. Yeah. And then just make sure, going around the bottom, that they're all attached. Because we want this to be like the central one, all we'll do is gently just sort of stroke it, I suppose is the easiest description. And gently just this way. clinch. As you go down, just tighten your grip on your fingers. just to create that point. And then I would now leave that upside down to dry for about 15 minutes, maybe half an hour, so that obviously when you add your second layer, you don't get it all falling back to front. So that's the kind of way it should look when it's stood. Is that in shot? Yep, that's yeah. it. What size ball are you using? That was a one inch ball, so it's that two, just over two centimetres. Yeah. And again, I bought those on Amazon, so they're ever so cheap. You can buy hundreds for a few quid, so they're really good. So that's that. Like I said, I will dry that upside down. So for the centre of this giant dahlia, you'll need three like that. And each layer is exactly the same. Cut it out, texture it the same way with the Dresden tool. But the, again, if you leave it for 15 to 20 minutes before each layer, you find then that you, you gradually get the illusion that the flower's opening. If you're impatient and you put three on all in one go, you just get three really close, tight sort of sets of petals. So by giving it the 15, 20 minutes in between each stage, you then end up with something like this. So you can see it's got a lot of thickness to it. It started to, to sort of, it's now wider at the top than it is the bottom. So that's three, three layers. So that took me, what, 20 minutes in between, sort of an hour and a half. So again, it's good to work on two or three at a time. So while the first one's drying, you can make your second, third, maybe fourth, and then you're ready to go back to the first one and put your second layer on. So that's that. And then I'll show you, after that, we're then gonna to start to make our proper petals that go around that which will be something like this. So I've pre-made some of these, just again for speed, I want them to dry. So all these are uh, little tubes. I'll quickly show you how I make those. So the can cutters... We, can we just have a look at the finished flower again? The finished flower, of course you can. No, you can thumb. Oh, the finished one? Yeah. yeah, yeah. One second, there we go. So that's the finished flower. So you can see there, look, that's basically the bit we've just created in the middle. And now we're going to add these little tubular pieces around that. 
and then everything else is soft and flexible because it's all wired. So, right, I'll jump over. Then I'll just explain about the cutters. So like I said, they're not posh dahlia cutters, they're actually leaf cutters. They're a standard PME leaf cutter. It's a set of three, largest, medium, a small one, obviously, we're not using today. So these are, just to give you a bit of, eight centimetres long, four, five by two. So we'll start off with this one and work up to that. Like I said, if you go on the internet and you want to get yourself a set of cutters, at this stage, you don't necessarily need a big dahlia cutter. Also, you'll struggle to find dahlia cutters that big. That's partly why I use these. So back to the paste. And how many layers before you apply the tubes? Uh, I did, th there's three on this one. There's three layers there. But again, if you find, if you do put it on, maybe you've rushed it a little bit and it looks quite small, put a fourth on. There's no sort of right or wrong. If you look at dahlias, I often have a garden magazine as reference to hand. And I'll look at it and you'll see the centre of this one is a lot smaller than the Cafe au lait. So just sort of trust your instincts on that one. But yeah, that's, that's roughly what we're going for today. So, And then for the, the tubular petals that go around it, you'll need, again, approximately, because it depends on how big your centre is, um, about anything from sort of 13 to 16 petals. So I'm just going to put a bit of Crisco on the board. I'm going to roll this. And again, I'm just going to pop it through the pasta machine, but this time I'm going to put it on the last, but mine doesn't have numbers, so unfortunately I can't give you the number, but not the very fine setting. The next one to it is, is what I've done. So it's, you've got, what's that, sort of two millimetres? And then I'll cut out, I'll do three. You don't want to watch me do more than three. <laughs> it's a sunny day, you want to get outside and enjoy the sun. So, right. so that's what they look like. The only thing is, is we're actually going to use them upside down. So the, the very thin end is actually going to be the bottom of ours. So that's, that's one of the things. And another little tip, I don't know whether you can see, to keep the petals, if I'm working on Obviously, I'd cut out all 13 or 15 in one go. So you can buy folders for your petals to keep them fresh and stop them cracking. If not, I've got two cake lace mats here. So all I do is pop them between two cake lace mats. Obviously, smooth sides together because you don't want textured, <laughs> textured petals. And just lay them over each other and that will keep them airtight. And it's just a nice way to sort of to work with them. So. I'll work on this sideways on so you can see me. So, like I said, this is the end that people will actually see, the, the fatter end. So gently place your finger on the point and with the ball tool, we're going to soften the edge and then we're going to start to stretch the petal. So just gently, I'm not putting on, so if you do it too strong, that's what happens, you'll tear, the, tear that off. So let's do another one. It does help. Normally, if I was doing it, I'd work towards myself, but I think my fingers are probably covering up what I'm doing, so that's why I'm doing it sideways. So we soften the edge, and then we can start to stretch the petal. And again, if you hold the back of it, you can stretch the diameter of it too. What's the love for your cake, cake mat tip? Fab. It's great. Quite often I'll use what's around me and it's amazing things have got, they've always got more than one use, haven't they? So, right. So you can see I've just thinned it out, stretched it and we've still got our point. And then, turn it back so you can see, from the pointed end, I'm going to use the very fine pointed end of the Dresden tool. Again, starting past it. I'm just going to gently draw a line at the middle of the petal. We, we don't want any texture, we don't want to curl the petal at this stage or shape it. All I'm doing is creating some veins. Again, th there are daily veins on the market. 
Usually though, they tend to be smaller because this is such a big flower. I couldn't find a vein that was big enough. So this is my method. Since I started making this flower, perhaps you can get larger veiners now, I'm not sure, but, or even like a, a peony veiner. If you gently added a little texture with that, that would perhaps add enough texture to it. But like I said, one straight down the middle, and then we're just gonna go in a slight, sort of following the contour of the, the petal itself. We're just going to add a few more lines to create the texture to the petals. Not putting a lot of pressure on, just you'll, see, you'll soon see when you start to do it. So if I hold that up, yeah, mm -hmm. so that's what we're doing. And then we'll turn that round, we'll turn our Dresden round to the fatter end. And I'm going to drag, this time I will put some pressure on, you'll find if you drag through it quite flat, it won't do an awful lot. If you drag through it at sort of a good 45 degrees, like this, it will sort of definitely add some shape and texture. And you can see already we've got a nice point on the tip of it. Little bit of glue. And I'm just gonna put a very, very fine line just along the base. The higher up the glue goes, the tighter the petal. So we, we, we well, obviously we want these as tubes, so we don't want to go high, we just want to go as perhaps what, a third to a quarter, just a little bit at the base. And to help you roll them, whether it's a giant dahlia or a small one, I find this is a technique I've sort of made myself. Depending what you use, obviously it creates a, a sort of smaller tube or wider tube. So if you've got a food score, put the point of it at the tip of your petal, Wrap this over and just roll it, and you'll find that gives you the roll that you're looking for, rather than trying to do it yourself with your fingers. Trust me, you'll, you'll make hundreds before you get a few. So I find the cocktail stick works, and then, like I said, you can give it a pinch, you can make it unique. I try and set myself a little challenge to make every single petal different to the other one. So some will bend that way, some will bend that way. Some will be quite tight, you'll see, like this. And then if, if they are tight, you realise you've got too many tight ones. If you get yourself the cone tool, unless, if anyone knows its proper name, <laughs> I don't know what, I've never named it before, so. And then all I would do, you can just go in there, push it down, and again, you're in control then of, of the shape of your petal, so. I quite like the shape of, of that. So that's, like I said, I would then make about 15, 16 of those, lay them in a line, so that when you've made your 15th, you know that the first one is the driest, and that's the one you'll start to, to sort of stick on with. So we'll do that. I'll just show you the other petals. While we're doing petals, we'll do them all in one go. And for that, I'm going to flip my board. Just going to turn it round. So we're going on to the wired petals now. Again, we're starting off with the smaller ones. We're going on to the larger ones. Again, I would say there's no right or wrong. But if you make, say, 15 of each, on this, on the big flower, I know I've used 13 of the smaller, and I think 15 of the larger. So. Each flower, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle without a picture. You don't know till you put it together what and it's going to what look like. what temperature is your paste? It's just, just room temperature, isn't it? Yeah, just room temperature. Right, so, a little bit more paste. I'm just going to put a little bit of Crisco on the groove. I'm doing it on the large groove just so that it shows up more for you on the camera. But if I was doing this for real, I'd do it on the smaller groove and for the smaller petals, I'm going to use a 28 gauge wire that's been cut into quarters. So you want it quite sort of fragile and flexible. Just going to work that paste a little bit. Roll it into a, 
a sausage. Can I just say thanks to the people that had thanked me for filming? I didn't want to. I didn't want to put Ben off. That's why I didn't yeah, say thank you before. Right. <laughs> He's not actually doing it. He's just stood behind it now. But I can't. <laughs> I'm waiting for a gin and tonic. <laughs> I'm a typical man. I can't multitask, so I can't read your comments and concentrate on the flower. That's why. So. <laughs> right. We'll flip that over. You can see now, hopefully, the groove in the board. And again, remembering we're using these upside down, so the thin end is going to go on the groove and cut out our first small petal. Again, if you wanted to do all 15 like this and sandwich them between your cake base mats, that will work. You can get a bit of a, a bit of a sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, factory going there, can't you? Right. How are we doing for time, Chris? Um, I was just about to write on a post-it for you, but uh, it's, you've had 25 minutes. Gosh, that goes quick. Yeah, 20 right. minutes left. Again, I've just dipped it into a little bit of edible glue. I want to insert it by about for a centimetre. And I'm just going to push it in. Could you use the twiddle method? You could use the twiddle method. But, however, the only thing with the twiddle method is you do tend to get lines on the back. It's not so bad on this flower because there are lots of textures, you'll see when they're finished, there are lot, lots of lines on the petals. So you would be able to disguise the twizzle method, but I think this is the best way. This is the Ben the Cake Man way, so do it this way. <laughs> and also for competition work, you don't want to see joins, because when you dust it, the dust won't go onto the, the joins where, where you've sort of stuck the back on. This way you'll get clear dusting as well. So again, and then exactly the same as before, except obviously it's wired. I've turned it over. Give it a little pinch between your fingers to make sure that that wire is attached. And then soften the edges first. And then you'll, you'll see, I'm just going to stretch down. I'll change the shape of this one a little bit. So again, we'll curl it that way. So just to try and make everyone a little bit different. So when we put them all together, and thin Dresden tool, line it up with the wire, and just gently straight line, some curves, follow it round, follow it round, there we go. Again, turn that round, turn your Dresden round, and we'll just add a nice curve in the middle. Except, and then these, we're going to dry these rather than the tubes. These are the next layer. So we're going to start to sort of open the flower up now. So you can use some textured foam or um, an apple tray. But I find for the smaller ones, you're best to use these. And then when we do the larger petals, we'll jump, we'll jump up a size. I'm just going to pinch the base. And I like that natural curve that that's got. So I'm just going to keep that, give it a little pinch. And you'll see that's that's the small petal. So we'll do about, like I said, 15-ish or so of those. The large one, I'll quickly do the large one. It's had half an hour. Huh? We had half an hour. Nearly. Speed. Ooh. Right. This is how quick I normally work. That's the thing, working alone, making lots of wedding cakes, you do get the knack for being fast. So, we'll see, right, that's the larger one. The method is exactly the same. The only thing I change on this one is that I jump up to a 26 gauge wire. Another little tip, I always cut my wires and put them in little cups, labels, rather than cut them per flower. You find yourself forever cutting wires and it drives me nuts. So, that's another little thing that I do. Again, I'm just going to push that into the base, about just over a centimetre on this one because it's a bit bigger. Give it a pinch and exactly the same, stroke the edges. It's Squires paste, Melanie. Yeah, this is Squires this time. If you wanted to, if, you, if it dried dry too quickly for you and you wanted to slow it down, if you put in the equivalent of say like 10%, um, regular sugar paste, like fondant paste, 
it would it would slow it down a bit for you then. So you've got a little bit longer to work with. So if you if you were say a beginner and it was the first time you were trying this, or even intermediate and it was the first time you were trying this, to give yourself a little bit more time, just add a little bit of fun to it. And what cutters are they, Ben? And they're PME, the PME cutters, and they're they're standard set of three leaf cutters. Is what I use. So two in one. Turn around, make your loose. Just gonna add some textures. Right, let's be just a bit. Again, to add some shape to this now as well, I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna put three, one shaped to the shape of the petrol. One down the middle, turn it back over and then go in between them. So it just adds a bit of a concertina to the petal. And then when you push it together, gently look with your fingers, you'll see you get that shape, which, believe it or not, is on a real dahlia petal. So they, they're quite shaped. And to dry that, I will go onto the apple cart and just rest the, the sort of base of it in there and then the top will curl over. Again, you can just play, give that a bit more time, making sure that you're happy with the. So, I have obviously made some already. Half an hour, in fact. So, I've got 15 minutes left. I'm just going to show you how I dust them. So, I'm going to be using uh, Roxine Rich dusts. So, there's Roxine Rich powder pink. Put a little bit of that. And at the base, you could add, I won't do it on this because I don't want to run over because I know we've got a busy day ahead. Um, this is butterscotch. So I'll show you where, oh, go on, I've gone. That's what you're here for, isn't it, of all things, so. <laughs> right. So, all I would do is sort of load up my brush, knock the excess off, you don't want it too intense, and just very lightly, I'm using a sort of, it's not a special brush, but I, I call it a small makeup brush. It's really, really soft and fine, so it's really easy for getting just that very natural graduation on the base of the petal, like so. You don't want a lot on it. And again, I'll use just a little bit of the butterscotch to sort of enrich the base. So it's, there's not a lot going on on there but you'll see hopefully there's a little bit of a colour but again reference if you get yourself a picture you can look I mean you'd be surprised the sort of plum colours bring it closer sorts. to the, the camera the petal there's like plum colours closer there's, there's quite a lot of things in there so right so that's that then the tubes that we're going to add what I would do, you, you can stick these on first, or if you find it easier to do it this way, a little bit of the powder pink, and just, just give inside the tube a bit of a wiggle, and it just adds a bit of depth right down inside there. So we'll move that over. And then, very quickly, because time is flying by, so we're back to our centre, and our little tube petals that we created have now had sort of 15 minutes or so to dry. So they, they're still soft, you'll see, I can still move them, but they're holding their shape, which is what you want. Because when you attach them, they're not going to break, but obviously you want them to hold their shape. And then all I'm going to do is paint sort of between the previous sets of petals right down to the bottom. And then I'll get one. And they'll find their own, usually find they find their own. You, yeah. again, you want them higher, so I'd, I'm adding in, again about a centimetre taller than the original flower. And I'm lining it up and I'm just pushing it in so that sticks above, so you can see, see that? So again, move, and you want these evenly spaced around, but just, just
just sort of emphasise the height, some a little higher, some a little lower. You can always go around it once and then look at the flower and think, oh, there's a gap, like two or three more. So like I said, whether you need 13 or 15, you'll, you'll soon see. It's always worth making those extra couple of petals. But just work your way round and then I'd perhaps... Once I've been round, I'd think, oh, I think I'll be able to squeeze another one in there, sort of thing. So, again, because I want to be able to show you how I wire this together, I'm going to go on to, I'm going to switch it. So that's what it will look like. You can see already, there's the first three. So I've gone round, there's 13 on that one. And I've dusted it. So that has actually got a little bit of the powder pink just pushed deep inside those little tubes just to add the colour. Right. And then we go on to the sets of petals pre-made. Like I said, these are the smaller ones that have been done. I haven't put the butterscotch on these just for time, so I'll push that in there so you can see. You've got 10 minutes left then. Right, so that should be enough to tape it together. <clears throat> and then also, if you want to fire off We've got 10 minutes left, so if you have got questions, try and fire those in now, so I can answer them before the end. So we, you know where to get everything from. I can always put, put I'm sure Paul and David, I know they're watching, will be able to, uh, I can send them a list of everything that I've used, just stretching the tape. Right, so, I will now start to add these smaller petals that we've had to dry. I would leave these at least six hours, but normally that I'd leave, that has been drying overnight. So have these petals been drying overnight. I dusted them this morning and I'm putting it together. So that's my sort of timeline. You find if you try and do this while they're semi wet, these will start to sort of drop off and you end up in a right mess. So yeah, give these a good six, 12 hours or just leave it overnight and then you know that you've got a nice solid base to work with. So with these we're just going to more or less go in between the other. And what colour did you put into the paste then? The paste I used um, sugar flare peach with a little bit of cream and the cream just knocks that sort of harsh Orangeness. And what size was the cutter at the beginning? This one. And the cutter that was um, four inches. I'll just double check that for you. Yeah, four four inches or about ten about ten centimeters. So you can see we're just going to work our way around the edge now. Keep it down. Adding adding these petals and height wise. We're just, you'll see, we're just sort of in between the, the ones that are attached. So as long as it's, it's kind of in between. Are they the same height or higher than the previous ones? I don't know if this. They're the same, they, yeah, they're just sitting in between. And I'll gradually, I'll go round with a few. And then if I've got a few spares, for example, I'll just start to play with the height. So if you, if you, give it, say, a five millimetre higher and lower, alternate the petals, you'll get a much more natural looking flower then. So, what you'll see, if I start to add them, I'm just gonna take those on. You'll find by taping, gotta go down. It's really strange, taping lower than you <laughs> normally would and obviously when you twist it these are going to fly out a little bit like propellers so we can just gently pop those back into place after how much would you charge to make a flower like this oh it's tricky that is what you don't make them independently do that's you? the thing i mean i always say that to custom if people inquire about flowers i always say unfortunately they only come with a wedding cake because it's people, people never ever understand how long or why they would be so expensive. But again, a day and a half to make a flower, so. You've got five minutes. Would they want to charge a day and a half's wages? 
I doubt it. Right, let's get a few more on these. I'll speed up a bit. Is that wafer paper or fondant? This is uh, flour paste. So yeah, I don't, um, I never really make flowers with, with wafer paper. I'm old school, I like them to be, uh, I like sugar paste. Just gonna, we'll see, line that up. I'll start adding them, I normally add them one or two at a time, so I've got a bit more control over exactly where they're going, but for speed. <laughs> You've got four minutes. <laughs> Whack them on. Right, the race is on. <laughs> We can do it, we can do it. There you go, look, you can see afterwards you can sort of give them a tweak and put, so obviously <laughs> you definitely need something in there, so that looks nice. How would you store them? There. Store them, make sure that they are fully dry first, um, but I tend to make the cake the flowers for my cakes kind of like the week of the wedding last minute as always um, or the week before at the most so I, I don't really have to worry too much about the storage but I would put this then when it's all taped I'd push it into polystyrene cake dummy very loosely put a little bit of cling film over the top oh Paul's, Paul's giving you five extra minutes if you need it fab fab awesome thanks Paul sorry <laughs> Keep it down. Right, there you go. So you can see, I mean, that is a lovely flower. You could you could just sort of do it at that stage if you if you wanted to. But to you can charge more with this, look, when you've got more petals on. I'm just gonna put and these you'll see, I'm just lining them up basically at the, the tip. You you look at the flower, there'll be a natural sort of position for them, so you'll see. That's about bottom to, to the bottom of the petal, bottom of the flower. Some of the petals as well, as on a real day here, I'll actually put on backwards. So although I dried it that way, I'm actually going to turn it over because some dahlia petals, as they grow, do get a bit confused as to and which way. What's your page then? My page, I am, yes, if you don't know me, I'm Ben the Cake Man. So, I've been making wedding cakes for about 20 years, but I'm also a judge at Cake International as well. So you might have seen me around the halls judging wedding cakes. And also I teach, so teach around the UK mainly. I've just recently started teaching online as well. So it's a, a nice new journey for me. You'll see, just starting to build up these bigger bigger petals in the background. But yet my pa I'm, um, how, how would you recommend uh, customers store this and how long would they last? They'll last, again, once they're dry, proper dry, they'll last, they might fade a little bit, but they'll last for months. But I never like to make them, like I said, that far in advance. I'll just show you the back as well. So you can see they all sort of start to be like cogs, cogs of a of a wheel. I could describe it as. And how heavy is the final flour? flour? And how do you insert it into a cake? Right. To insert it into a cake, I would trim it. And also, a little tip: the smooth side of wire cutters. If you angle the smooth side away from you, when you cut it, all the shock that that creates of cutting the wire is thrown away from the flour, so you don't break your flowers. If you have the smooth side towards the flower, when you cut through it then it shoots the shock up the wires and that's when you get broken flowers. So, and I would use a posy pick like this, pop that in the cake and, and pop that in there. I'm really sorry, lots of people are um, commenting and, and asking questions but they're, they're going up too quick for me to No problem, to keep what my I'll do, I'll them. go through, because I know Paul and David are posting the videos individually, so what I'll do, I'll go through my video afterwards and I shall make sure I answer everyone's questions. If not, if you have got a question, if you tag me in on Cakeflix, if you tag at Ben the Cake Man in, I'll be able to uh, come and... You're now in your extra time. Right. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. 
Hopefully it's worth it, guys. Thank you. Okay, you can see. So yeah, let's turn it up. I, normally when I'm making a flower, I do keep looking at it from above, the view you can see. And you'll, you'll notice yourself, you'll, you'll sort of think there's bits that you like or dislike. So definitely, to me, there's a, a, there's a gap there. So I'll play with petals then, see which way they sit best. A few people have said how realistic it is, but I, I think that's partly because you don't make every petal the same, isn't it? Yeah, that definitely. They're... And also, I think they're realistic. If you use a real flower as a guide, your flower is always more realistic and more natural. Because, again, I know I keep saying it, but flowers, you know, they're not all the same. But a lot of cake world flowers, everyone tries to make them exactly the same as the other one, which is lovely, but it's much more natural like this. So. And also, it's lucky, because if, if you make a really good one and a bad one, you can just blame it on nature, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> right. So I have got a couple of petals left, which... Right, I've got five minutes. Yeah, you've got four. Four. Right. We will do it. We will do it. Let me... This is the fastest 45 minutes I've ever known. <laughs> There we go, you'll see. And you can, that's the beauty of them being wired, the base ones. You can have a little play around and I think there's one missing. Another little tip before we run out of time. When your flower is done, if you can see, hold it like that. And then you suddenly think, oh, there's a, there's a gap there that's really bugging me. Those little, the method we did at the beginning, the little tubes, if you make a few extras or even a small, small wired petal. The beauty of this flower is you can just go in there, thread a petal in, and you'll see you can start filling the gaps. So that's a really nice way of making the perfect day then. You won't have any gaps anyway just by slotting in some little fillers afterwards. So that is do you add the, do you add the calyx to this? I don't um, if it was for a competition I would but because it's such a large flower, I'll show you the back of it. Um, you wouldn't see, when that sits on a cake, it sits quite flat, so you, you wouldn't really see the back of it. Or as a topper, right on the sort of top of a, a, a top tier kind of thing. So yes, I mean, if you want to, go for it. But there's, I, I wouldn't say you, you have to, because it's, you wouldn't really see it, so I think you're wasting wasting time. So I hope you you have enjoyed my very fast daily tutorial. But hopefully I've shown you all the stages of wiring of the, the tubes at the beginning, the small wired petals, the large wired petals, how to tape it all together, how to thread in your gap fillers afterwards and use a gardening magazine or Google for reference. And thank you very much. Thank you, Paul and David. Thank you for my extra five minutes. I really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of caking all over the world on Cake Fix today. And like I said, any messages, tag Ben the Cake Running on Cake Fix, and I'll answer them now with a gin and tonic in my other hand. So take care, guys, and stay safe. Bye.